hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. It's time to do all the evening chores and prepare supper. And today's been a very busy day. There's been a lot of information that has come out today and things that I've been paying attention to. And I wanna let you know that we need to have this conversation. And I wanna have this conversation with you because I know how helpful you guys are in the comments section. We have a lot of mamas and papas here. And I mean that as a compliment, which means you're doing your due diligence, you have a lot of life experience, you have a lot of skills, and you have a lot of good advice to give a lot of people, especially the younger generations that are joining us now here at Appalachia's Homestead. So we're gonna cut to the chase, and I'm gonna ask you a question as my cow sneezes. <laughs> Did you like that? Hey, it's real life farm, right? Right. So, I'm going to ask this as a question because I can come out of the date, uh, out of the date, out on a date, out of the gate, like blah, 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 and we should do, 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 and all these things. But I have seen that posing questions, um, and, and you know this as well as I do, that tends to, you know, you want people to think and ask themselves, well, what if, what if, what if? So I'm going to ask this. Um, have you considered, and we've talked about this before, but we really need to say this today. Have you considered what life would be like today if we entered into a depression greater than the actual Great Depression of 1929 to when? Now, the reason I say it like that is because, let's be honest here, it's 2023. If you have someone today that's 100 years old, that means they were born in 1923. That means during the Great Depression, they would have been still a child. So they can tell you lots of stories probably. Uh, my Nana, who is 86, so she was born during the Great Depression basically, uh, and she has a lot of information to provide because she had the life experience of being so poor. That has a lot to do also with the fact of where who, who our family was and where she was from at that time. Here's what I'm getting at. 99% of the population doesn't have an idea of what a Great Depression would feel like. We can guesstimate what that would feel like. We've seen movies on it. You can read books, you can read journals. But to say that you've had that life experience, most of us don't. Okay, so let's just check that off so that we know we've, we've pretty much covered that. Now with that, now you have the whole notion of the discussion is, the proposal is, is that not only would we go into a Great Depression greater than over, a, you know, basically a hundred years, almost a hundred years ago, but you're doing that in modern, more modern times. What does that mean? Well, let's be honest there too. People are not as responsible. They're not, they're not, uh, as they were 90 years ago. The family units are not together like they were 90 years ago. People don't have the physical capabilities to do the things that people, you know, several generations ago did. Very few, let's be honest. I mean, nobody, we're just gonna put it out there, right? Um, People in general don't have the skill sets, basic skill sets, how to cook, how to build a fire, how to cook on open fire, how to sew, how to raise animals, how to milk a cow, how to use certain things to defend themselves or to hunt. Um, I'm talking about overall. So when we talk about this lack of skills, lack of experience, lack of morality, lack of family unit, you throw our society into a great depression or heaven forbid something greater what do you think society is going to be like but here's the thing so a lot of us will talk about and say well it's going to be mass chaos yeah oh <laughs> that's an understatement but let's get past that for just a second let's just just, just ride with me here ride we're gonna roll do you have the skill sets and the items and the capability to barter, trade, or pitch in. How We could go a hundred ways with this. This is a huge conversation. 
Do you have all of these things in order to sustain just to make it through the time period of suffering, basically, that our great-great-grandparents did? It really was. Now, the fortunate thing about a lot of folks, particularly in Appalachia, <laughs> I've said this before, but it's the truth, a lot of them didn't know there was a Great Depression going on for several years because they were already so poor and so depressed. So they just kept maintaining what they were doing. Life isn't that way today now, is it? Here's where I'm going with this. I was talking to somebody today and I said, do you have extra, I did, I said this, do you have extra packs of underwear? And they just looked at me so bizarre. <laughs> and I said, do you have extra packs of underwear put away? Well, what am I gonna need that for? I said, well, do you like to wear underwear? <laughs> Maybe you don't. Maybe you go commando. I don't know. But my point here is, well, I've got underwear. I got plenty of underwear, Patera. I got underwear in my drawer. I said, do you have enough underwear to last you 10 years? Have you bought underwear in the last 10 years of your life because, you know, you got a little holy? <laughs> you were so holy, baby. Socks, underwear, belts, jeans, boots, raincoat. I mean, just think of basic items. I said, you know, you think you have all these things, and maybe you do, but you know, I don't know. Do you? It might, and maybe in a year or two or three, you might want a new pack of underwear. So, if you think that, if you answered yes to that, and see, this doesn't necessarily have to be just about underwear, okay? Boxers or panties or whatever, okay? I'm not trying to get. I'm trying to talk about things that are basic essentials. I mean, do you do you change your toothbrush every four to six months? I do. Can you do that every six months for the next 10 years with no problem? Because how are you going to get toothbrushes if they're not being made? I mean, I guess you could use your finger in a pine cone or something, but is that really what you want to do if you don't have to? Here's what I'm saying to you. If a lot of people that are being very openly honest about hyperinflation, the dollar collapsing, and the brink of being in a world war and also into a Great Depression. See, we've never been here before, people. I've told you in the last year to please try to push to have enough food and items to get you as, to two years. Two years, two years, two years. And that is, you know, that's, that's not an easy thing. And I, I know this, okay? I understand. I'm just trying to get your mind to move, okay? And to think. The question is, is what if you're looking at something that could be 5, 10, 12 years out? Do you have enough underwear to last 12 years? I mean, I'm just, that's a, a, a silly example, but I'm really being serious. What about your children? Do you have enough cleaning supplies? Even if you're like, well, I'm just gonna use vinegar and baking soda. Okay, fair enough. Do you have enough baking soda and vinegar to last you that long? Is it possible? Now, the obvious answer to a lot of these things is no, I don't have it or no, it won't last. I get that. That's not what we're, I'm trying to get you to see and understand that what we are most likely could be facing and it could come in different waves of different things and different. How are you going to manage? How is your family going to manage? Let's say you do have a lot of things that, that sustains you for the for you and your husband or wife and your little kids. Well, what if your mama has to move in with you? What if your, your sister and brother-in-law, they lose their jobs and they're good people and you want to help them? Maybe they don't have, uh, you know, the funds that maybe you do to try to prepare Something happens and they move in with you. I, you know, will they need a pack of underwear and a toothbrush? Do you see what I'm saying here? You can't just be naive and stick your head in the sand and say, okay, well, I've got six months worth of food and um, I paid off my Discover and I'm good to go. You're better than most. I'll give you that. Absolutely. Amen. And push for anything that you can accomplish. But here's another problem. Um, you know, we live in a time where we are, we have been set up to depend upon a country that pretty much isn't our friend. That's a nice way to put it, isn't it? Think about all the things. I want, here's a homework assignment for you. And you guys are so smart. I know you already know this. This is really to make you 
just to joggle your brain. This is to uh, for people that haven't thought about it. Walk around your house tonight. Don't don't get upset. Don't get stressed out. Just just walk around and look at the things that you use or that you really do need on a daily basis, but you may not have to replace it, but every three to six, 12 months. Could be a water heater, could be a toilet seat, could be a toilet scrubber. Do you see where I'm going with this? And I want you to think about what it, would it be like if these things that you may, may or may not have thought about in six months to a year break, need to be replaced. And well, where does it come from? Because, you know, manufacturing here in the United States is pretty much non-existent because, you know, <clears throat> yeah. Well, if we're in a war with this country or countries, or we're experiencing worse, incredible hyperinflation, will you be able to not only find the item, but will you be able to afford it? You might be able to go find a pack of underwear. Well, what if hyperinflation hits? So right now you might go and get you some Hanes underwear or I don't know what you like. And you might get a little six pack of underwear for 11, 12 bucks, whatever, I don't know. Well, what if all of a sudden it's $76? Don't think it can't happen. I'm not saying your underwear is gonna be $76, but the question is, and the thing that you need to think about is what if it is? What about your kids? What if you have a baby right now and something really bad happens and, you know, you need clothes for her that are three T's, four T's, five T's because a couple of years have gone by and baby's bigger. Baby's not in diapers anymore. Does she have, does she have her undergarments ready to go? Does she have basic clothing? Nothing fancy, just basic items. What I'm getting at, folks, is the Great Depression of 1929 and on lasted for years and years, basically up until we got into World War II. And then you know all the things that we had to go through. We didn't, because I wasn't alive yet, but my great grandparents went through. These were the greatest of generations, not just because they were hardy people, but because they did, they endured and lived through so much. Go through your house, take an honest, open look do you have enough of the very essentials to get you through a very long time period? You will be rationing. You will be using less. They did. If you were just to live like they did, think about how they had to absolutely pull back everything that they had and, and how they used it and how they had to make things. Like I said, I looked at this person today and I said, are you gonna be sewing your own underwear? Are you gonna be taking a potato sack or a linen cloth or whatever? And you're gonna, you know, you're gonna put the elastic. Do you know how to do that? And they just looked at me. They don't know how to sew. I said, well, you know, if you like having decent underwear and uh, you, this hits and you, you know, you're gonna be paying that through the nose for it if you can find it. Wouldn't it be smart to put a couple of little packs away today? I think so. We can't predict the future. I'm not predicting the future. I'm gonna fall in a pothole though. <laughs> See that? I'm not predicting the future. I'm trying to use common sense and I'm trying to apply that to the reality of the world that we're in right now and where we are very, here's the thing. It's like I've said before, it's the tree that's being chopped. Chop, 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 chop. Mm, mm, mm. And that tree's still standing. That poor tree is still standing. But when it falls, it's going to fall hard and fast. We're not living 1929, folks. Society is not 1929. It wasn't perfect back then. There were problems and there were bad people. But you know as well as I do, there's no comparison. Do everything that you can to prepare your home. Yes, beanie weenies. Yes, there's all the basics, water, medicine, and this and this and this putting away items that you know that you're going to need. You don't have to have necessarily brand new and don't be a snob about it. 
okay? Believe me, if any of this goes down, you are not going to be worrying about carrying a Louis Vuitton purse or wearing brand name shoes. You're just going to be thankful to have anything. That's going to be the case for most people. And I know this is very stressful to talk about, but you've got to stress now. You've got to be mad now. You've got to cry now. You've got to mourn now. Get it out and over with. Because frankly, you should be long past that. People are waking up, which I am thankful for, but the reality is we should be past that stage and be working to build, 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 and do the best that we can with our due diligence, how and ever we can do it. And I know people are gonna get mad at me for saying, go to the Dollar Tree, go to the Dollar General, go to the Walmart, go to the Costco. I get that. I know I, this is not the time to be arguing about where you and how you can prepare, okay? That is not an argument that you need to be stressing people over. The point is, is go get the basic items think long term and get them what's done is done we've got to make it through and the more we prepare even down to a pack of underwear and a pair of shoes or more the more successful you're going to be as an individual and as a family unit and as a community get it done hun get her done go get it done like, subscribe, and share. Guys, In the down in the comment section, this is where you come in. Start listing, th I'm asking you, because I can sit and list all day long, but you're gonna think of things that I, I haven't thought of. You're gonna mention things I haven't thought of, and I need to see it too. We all need to see it together here as a community here at Appalachia's Homestead. What are basic items that people use daily, weekly, list it I'm depending on you for that because I know the rest of us are reading the comments and guys this is where we learn and this is where we help like subscribe and share I gotta get to work I love you guys thank you for being here stay very very busy stay so busy nothing else is bothering you nothing else is bothering you we'll see you on the next video